Greetings and salutations, this is Rick. I hope you're having a great day. In today's video, I'm just kind of out on the road. It's a Sunday. Uh, the weather forecast was actually supposed to be sunny all day. Uh, it's completely overcast, so I'm not quite sure what's going on there. Uh, but I thought I would go out in the van nevertheless and just have a little wander around, see what's out there. Maybe have a look at some of these uh, these tree colours that are starting to go over now. Now we're hitting that autumnal time of year. Now the plan at the moment is to head towards uh, Marlborough and Savalac Forest and I just want to kind of have a look at uh, over the forest and just see what the colours are doing. I think it's still a little bit early yet, um, the, the trees are only just starting to go over uh, but I thought I'd have a look anyway, just kind of aim for that side of the world and uh, see where it goes from there. I might actually have a look um, around some of the little villages around the back of Marlborough, like Alton Barnes and uh, I think there's a canal back there as well. So uh, we'll see. I haven't made any, you know, sort of firm plans. I'm just kind of going to just follow me, uh, follow me nose and, and see where we end up. Thanks for all your comments on the previous videos. Uh, I haven't put too many videos up lately, but basically because I've been either a little bit busy or just generally, uh, you know, lacking on subject matter on which to make videos. I've um, been having a little bit of a kind of downtime and uh, I don't like to force the issue with video making. If, if I've got something to make a video on uh, or I'm doing something that's interesting, that's great, I'll make a video. But uh, if I'm just generally ticking along and not really sort of doing much and... Um, you know, I kind of don't like making videos for the sake of making videos because they can be quite tedious to be honest and um, They're just not not good watching But I know you guys like to uh, come along with me when I uh, go out in the van and just kind of you know be my passenger um, So hopefully I'll just drive through some nice countryside and have a little natter and uh, we'll see what's what Right, we're just uh, going through the little village of Ogbourne St George which is not far out of Marlborough so we're going to be at the uh, the forest fairly soon uh, but I was just thinking a few days ago I just watched the fourth I think it was the fourth episode of the brand new Star Trek uh, series called Discovery now you may or may not know I'm a total Trekkie I've been into Star Trek right from as right right from being a boy uh, right through my adult life I've watched probably at least an episode of some sort of Star Trek uh, once a day um, usually I sort of um, when I put my dinner on and I'm cooking my tea or my dinner um, and while I'm eating it I'll generally have an episode because it you know it's, it's a nice hour you know um, and it just kind of works out really well for me and literally for the last I don't know 20 30 years maybe um, I've watched at least one episode of Star Trek now the thing is I grew up with the next generation Star Trek Voyager Deep Space Nine um, not so much Enterprise I kind of I watched it but it just didn't it didn't grip me as much as the those other three series so you can take or take it or leave it with Enterprise but um, like I say Deep Space Nine uh, the next generation and Voyager you can ask me pretty much any question on any of those series and I could probably answer it um, so total Trekkie and I was kind of really excited looking forward to this new Star Trek Discovery uh, but alas I'm now four episodes in and it's just it's just not it's not doing it for me it's it's completely it's so not Star Trek if that makes any sense it's like it's a it's a sci-fi series that's got a Star Trek badge on it but it's almost like nothing to do with the Star Trek that I've come to know and love and I think there's a, a lot of elements I mean one of the elements about um, Star Trek uh, you know like the other three series like DS, DS9, Next Gen and Voyager is that it's good hearty family viewing and yet this new Star Trek Discovery it's really dark and gritty and I just for me straight away that doesn't resonate with me at all I'm just not into dark gritty stuff um, and then there's like the characters in all the other series you you have your favorite characters and for me it was all about the the characters and the interaction between each other 
you know you got your uh, every character's got their own sort of um personality and and their own traits um and you kind of you get to know and care about all the characters and for me that was absolutely the um the, you know the 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 most important thing but this new series i'm just i, I i'm just not connecting with the characters i don't particularly like them they're not that likeable there's nothing about them that uh is making me connect with them and to be honest at the moment there are only th sort of three main characters anyway um two of which are these kind of uh power uh power women uh, uh one kind of wimpy guy um and then there's like the roommate of the the main character and i mean she, out, out of all of them she's probably the most likable because she's got like these vulnerabilities and again in the other star treks you get to know the characters vulnerabilities and it kind of it's what makes you connect with them on a human empathic level um but these characters at the moment there's i'm seeing nothing that i'm kind of is making me connect with them in fact i even heard the main character that uh, michael i can't remember the surname i mean it, to start with who gives who gives a uh, it's like a, she's got a guy's name um which i mean it doesn't matter it's just you know it's it, it's like they're trying to break this mold and it's like well why break something when it um when it worked you know now i've actually heard the main character described as a mary sue and uh, if you don't know what a mary sue is it's a really despised character in fan fiction now fan fiction is basically stories that are written based on uh, already existing films tv anime uh whatever you know i think one of the most popular stories at the moment or m one of the most popular fan fiction subjects at the moment is harry potter um and lots and lots of people uh love to write harry potter fan fictions and i think no ray 2 as well is one of the other top ones which is um uh, an anime series but anyway fan fiction there are these two despised characters one is called the mary sue and one is called the gary stew depending on whether the character is male or female and these characters are like um perfect in every way and everybody loves them and they are just awful characters to to read about um because they're like perfect in every way and like i say the the main character in on this star trek um this new star trek discovery thing is actually being i've heard her described as a mary sue and in a way i can actually see why that is and uh it's like she's got no vulnerability she's perfect in every way and you, you know she's always going to sort of come through at the end and um i don't know it just I, I i totally get why why i read that and why that's being said now after saying that i actually write fan fiction and i think the last fan fiction i wrote was a bit of a gary stew um but i don't care because i just kind of write it for my own amusement um i suppose i mean the thing is the people who have read it uh, i've given really good reviews but it's hardly had any views because i've written it about a very obscure anime series so um but anyway uh i diverge i diverge um but yeah so so far star trek discovery hasn't really uh hasn't really floated my boat um and i should also say we're traveling through um Samanac forest at the moment and at the moment the colors are just um the colors are just still pretty summery at the moment so um we're a little bit early. there's a little bit of yellow going on over there um but i think what i need to do is come back in a couple of weeks time when the uh the trees have had a chance to properly turn the right colors and then i should get some really nice if i pick a, a day with the right light uh, i should get a really uh, nice set of photographs out of that um actually talking of photographs um <laughs> Looks like we're going to be going on a camping trip again soon uh, with um, Damon and Austin and Joe. And <laughs> I think there is talk of bringing some costumes along and lots of camera equipment. And I think we might be doing a little bit of a photo shoot. Uh, so that could be a lot of fun. Um, so 
<laughs> I'm not sure what that says. Four grown men dressing up and taking photographs. But hey, life's short, who cares? Uh, carpe diem and all that. <laughs> but knowing, knowing Damon, I mean, Damon has this absolutely amazing skill um, in photography. I, I've always said Damon has this gift uh, when, it, when I've seen photographs of, because uh, at one point he, did, he actually did photography professionally and um, he used to take photographs of um, dogs in a studio and some of his photographs are just, there's, there's a magical ingredient that you just don't get with most photographs. There's just something special about those photographs. Um, and whenever we've been sort of together and he's taking photographs, the photographs have always come out just like that they have that X factor ingredient that I don't see in like regular photographs that they, they, he, he's able to take photographs with the X factor that I've never been able to duplicate um, in uh, in my photographs you know even using the same equipment he will still tease out much better photographs from the camera um, than I possibly can and uh, so I've got to take my hat off to Damon for that. And I'm assuming he's going to be setting up the shot. So we could get some really good results. I'm kind of looking forward to it. And I would like, I've got some new garb coming uh, ready for my next LARP event because um, I've now joined a house uh, within Empire and I've just ordered some garb, which is uh, the right colors. And uh, I'm going to be working on my uh, garb between now and the spring. Uh, just to try to bring it up to scratch and make it look good. Now I'm going to be a house retainer, which is sort of like a servant role. It's not subservient, but it is a serving role. But as a yeoman, I still have my, um, uh, you know, I, I still have a say in things. And I, if somebody asks me to do something, I can tell them where to go if I want. So, um, but a, a servant role is, from what I've read and understood, and, and from what I feel, um, is a good role to play to learn the game and learn how everything works but also it's a lot of fun to play a servient role but yeah going back to that um, Star Trek Discovery thing like I say I'm a little bit disappointed with it I'm hoping because I have seen other reviews of it on um, on YouTube and um, I've read up on various blogs and I'm not the only one thinking uh, this and there are a number of um, fairly hardcore Star Trek fans that are just so sort of unhappy about it um, and I'm hoping that the writers are going to take that into account when they get on to I'm assuming they're writing the next season now uh, or you know it's in the making at the moment but I'm hoping they're going to take into account uh, the feelings of the fans uh, and actually try to make it a little bit more Star Trek and less uh, something else because uh, at the moment it's just like uh, you know like I say it's just a it's a sci-fi series that just so happens to have a, a bit of a Star Trek badge on it but it's not Star Trek it's not 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 as we know it <laughs> uh, look at that I've got the mist in the background we've got the layer of the land like of the rows of trees and the uh, hills and they're gradually getting more and more misty in the distance you're probably not going to see any of that because uh, you're on the wide angle so everything is like really distant for you. Oh, well, apparently we've got a hurricane on the way. Uh, although I think Ireland is going to take the brunt of it. Uh, although they, they're saying it may possibly um, be decategorised uh, by the time it reaches landfall. Which hopefully that will be the case. Otherwise we're looking at 80 mile an hour winds. Uh, which I know is nothing compared to what some of you guys uh, in the States have had to go through uh, in recent weeks. Um, but 80 mile an hour winds is still pretty, pretty severe. Um, but hopefully it's not going to uh, amount to much. But I took some snapshots from my iPhone this morning uh, of what it looks like right now as I'm making this video. And I'm probably showing you those on the screen now. Right, I think we're in the little town of... Is this Burbage? But, uh, yeah, we're going to be touching on Salisbury Plain. Now, 
Salisbury Plain is famous for the uh, the military manoeuvres that are carried out there and at some point soon you're going to start seeing some tanked crossings and these are areas of road or th these are bits of road where tanks cross over and you can always tell them because they've got these bright um, fluorescent posts uh, that lead up to them and, and away from them. I think we've got a tank crossing coming up. Here we go, there's a sign for a tank. And just along here, uh, there we go, you'll see these, these bright yellow uh, posts either side of the road, and these denote uh, that this is where tanks cross. And over to the right there is the beginnings of Salisbury Plain. Um, we're just coming up on a small town called Tidworth and this is basically a barracks town. This is like an army barracks um, town. It's just a huge uh, Ministry of Defence presence here. And really strict speeding rules here. Um, I remember these guys were notorious. The last, last, well, all, every time I've come down this road, every time I've come down this road there's generally been police waiting just down at the bottom of a hill just as you go through a 30 sign oh good grief it looks like um, Tidworth has not escaped the expansion project there's a whole bunch of new houses there that were, that were not there last time I was here um, in fact the layer of the land has changed considerably looking at this Right, this is all completely new. There's a whole new estate here that I've never seen before. This all used to be fields. And you just come up over the brow of the hill, there's your 30 sign, and just as you go down into the town, there's like a little pull-in on the left uh, outside some shops, and there'd always be police there with their speed cameras. So I'm going to be quite cautious. But yeah, I'm surprised. This is a whole new estate. It goes right right the way across there and they're still building by the looks of it that's a lot of new houses there we go look downhill round the corner so you don't actually see the cops until like it's too late doesn't look like they're there today but normally they sit just past these traffic lights or they always used to Porton Down, all traffic. Now Porton Down, as far as I'm aware, Porton Down is a big experimental place where they, they've got all sorts of um, underground uh, labs where they uh, work on kind of nasty stuff, perhaps chemical warfare or biological stuff. Not sure I'd want to live around here <laughs> if I'm honest. Uh, I might be wrong but I, I, as far as I'm aware it's a it's a, a military um, experimental lab place. If I'm wrong on that, do please feel free to correct me. Uh, but that's what I've always been led to believe. Here's up Old Serum here. You hope you can see it all. Uh, it's just like these, these multi-tiered hill things. <laughs> Right, we're just coming into Salisbury, twinned with... Oh, couldn't read that. There was a bush in front of it. The Old Serum car park is on the right up here. Okay, got traffic behind me. Wow, this looks pretty impressive. Hmm, I hope I've got to pay. I haven't brought any money with me. Literally, I haven't brought my wallet with me. Yeah, you got to pay to go in. Poo. <laughs> uh, nope. Well, I'm. I'm a little look around but I'm not going to be able to go in because 
I literally haven't brought any money with me. Right then, I'm going to switch over to this camera. Hopefully it's going to work on the gimbal. This was the, um, the, the foam shield I was telling you about. Hopefully that's going to take care of any uh, wind noise. So I basically got the GoPro 4 under there and literally the only thing exposed is the, uh, the lens. Um, so I'm going to switch over to that and uh, I will see you in a moment. Okay, William the Conqueror inherited Old Sarum from the last Saxon King of England. There you go, bet you didn't know that. Uh, already defended and beside an important road junction, it was an ideal site for a royal castle. Uh, the great outer defences provided him with a ready-made arena for mustering troops and it was here in 1070 uh, that he paid off his army after a long and bitter campaign in northern England it was here too in August 1086 that he called together all of the major landholders in England so they could all swear allegiance to him. Um, it, was it was a crucial moment. Doomsday Book was being written. A threatened Viking invasion had only just been averted and William's eldest son was in armed rebellion. Never was it more important for the Norman King of England to be seen in all his majesty. They're charging £5.30 to go in and uh, I haven't brought any money with me. Um, I've made the mistake of forgetting my wallet uh, before I come out. I knew there was something, you know that thing, there's, there's something in the back of your mind that you've forgotten to do. It was that, I didn't bring any money with me. Normally I have my wallet with me. But uh, hopefully I've got plenty of fuel to get home, so it's not an issue, um, as, as long as I uh, don't need to spend any money. Um, worst case scenario, I think I've got a, a company credit card with me, so um, uh, I'll have to explain my... <laughs> if I get stuck, I'll have to use that and then explain my uh, actions to my, um, my business partner as to why I've just spent some of the company's money. Uh, but hopefully we should be fine. Um, but anyway, I decided I'm not going to go in because obviously I haven't got any money so I can't pay to go in. But um, it's only the middle bit that uh, they're charging to go and see. That's probably the, the most interesting bit. However, it does look like there is some uh, additional uh, works going on over here. So I thought I'd go and have a look and uh, see what's what. Now hopefully you can hear me okay. I've got a little bit of a problem with the Zoom H1 mic um, in my pocket it, it, where the um, the little 90 degree adapter goes in to stop the wire sticking out at 90 degrees uh, when it gets jostled around it can make uh, clicking noises and, and buzzing noises on the mic so I've got this mic recording hopefully you can hear from that and I've also got this one recording so hopefully I get a double whammy sort of stab at uh, the audio so let's see what's what this is a very well kept uh, grass. This is um, English heritage. That's why they're charging. I think if it was National Trust, I think they uh, they tend not to charge um, on some of their sites. But let's see if I can find um, an information board so uh, I know what I'm looking at. Because at the moment, uh, all I'm seeing is some very well preserved um, <laughs> building foundations, I guess. These places normally have some sort of a, a plaque or... Ah, there we go, there's one over there. Let's go and have a look at that. Hello. I've got company. <laughs> right, let's have a look at this. Okay, ooh, that's... Faded and defaced. All right, old Sarum's ghosts. We do not know what was happening on this hill 5,000 5, years ago, but on the slopes around, on the slopes around it, early farmers were establishing ceremonial sites which seemed to respect and even revere it. Okay. Uh, during the Iron Age, a fort was built on the hill. Its white chalk ramparts dominated the landscape emphasizing the cohesion and power of its builders it was later occupied by the romans saxons and by the normans who rebuilt the fort in stone 
By early medieval times, a castle, cathedral and a thriving market town all prospered here. Uh, all this ended when a new cathedral was built at the new city of Salisbury. The little market town struggled on for a while, but eventually was deserted. So Salisbury, you can see, hopefully you can see that spire right there. That is Salisbury Cathedral. And uh, that's a pretty spectacular cathedral. Um, if ever there was a place of ghosts, this must be it. So you are here. Okay. So that's the car, the, the roundy bit there, which is up there. So this is, essentially was a market town until they built Salisbury over there, and they sort of deserted this this area. Ah, another plaque. More information. I'm hungry for information because I don't really know what I'm looking at. Ah, it was a cathedral. I thought so. Yeah, the glory of God. The nave of the cathedral was the only part that ordinary people were allowed in to attend. The ceremonies involving only the clergy took place at the far end, closed off behind a screen. Okay, so this was a cathedral. This was the original Salisbury Cathedral. Well, not Salisbury, it's Old Sarum Cathedral, wasn't it? Um, cool, okay. So this is kind of like... Um, well, like a lot of cathedrals are made, it's in a cross shape, so you've got the length runs this way, and then you've got the the, the cross bit going across here. Um, but unfortunately, that's all I can sort of tell you. My knowledge of such things is very limited. But yeah, it does, it does make me wonder why... Whenever you come to ruins like this, you get this kind of... It's like somebody skimmed off the building and you just end up with this, like, almost like the foundation line where it lays. And I'm, I've always assumed that's because they reuse the, all the brickwork and everything um, that, was, that was used to make these buildings. I'm assuming they'll reuse them. They'll, you know, make other buildings with them or something. Otherwise, because if th this was all made of stone, because according to that picture there, it was all made of stone and brickwork, surely some of it would still be here. But purely an assumption on my part. If you know any different, do feel free to let me know. Lovely grass, I'll give you that. It's like a bowling green. That's an interesting bit. Not quite sure what this is. Let's go take a look. The first thing I noticed, it's absolutely silent down here. I can't hear anything. That's amazing. That's just bizarre. I've just literally come down into this little dip. I can't hear a thing. It's silent. I can hear my ears ringing and that's it. Wow. So what's this bit then? It's some information plaques would be useful. Looks like some sort of um, window thing there, although sounds hollow. Hmm. Okay, well I have no idea what this bit is. There's some um, remnants of some bricks here, some stones. Looks like they've gone round in a, a circle. So I wonder, how does this work? I mean, this looks like, like concrete and flint just kind of poured in and set around the stones that were already here. So did they build the stone thing first and then infill it with this stuff? Did this start out life as concrete or what? I'm confused as to how this works. 
because these bricks are obviously fused with this stuff. This looks like poured concrete. Um, but there again, there's a consistency of colour all the way through it. So it, if you've ever built a brick wall and made up new batches of mortar or cement, you always end up with different shades, or I do anyway. Yet there's a consistent shade of... of if, if this is some sort of concrete or mortar, there's a consistency through it in the colour. So how does that work? Unless it's just poured in dry and over time it's just set. I don't know, but how, how can these, these bricks be fused into it? Can anybody recommend like a dummy's guide to this kind of thing? Because uh, a lot of history books I've looked at, they can be a little bit um, uh, heavy going, you know, and <laughs> for a novice like me, I need something that's just a little bit more um, uh, just basic. But stuff like this just kind of fascinates me how they did this. Um, but yeah, if you've got any ideas, uh, like on a book or actually how they did that, I'd be really interested to hear. But I, I would say just by looking at that, it looks like the bricks were there first and then they backfilled it with some sort of soil or something or some sort of cementy type soil that then set. Otherwise, how can these be fused together? Unless they put the, the stuff there and while it was still wet, they knocked these in. I don't know, just mystery. Same here, look. Got the same thing. Which came first? Was it that or was it the bricks and then they filled in with that? Or is this modern day stuff? I'm pretty sure it's not because it's all around. Um, don't know. More, uh, more questions than I have answers at the moment. But yeah, if anybody could recommend some sort of like, I don't know, it would be um, basic ruins for dummies or something. <laughs> there must be some basic book out there that can talk me through this. It's a nice view from up here. I presume that's Salisbury Plain in that direction. Um, see this is like a raised big square and it's just raised up and then drops down again it's like, like a mini moat going around it so I don't know what that's all about it would be really useful to have a few more information plaques around here um, maybe I have to buy a leaflet at the shop so there we go that's uh, just a little look at the outside of Old Sarum like I say at some point when it's not so busy I'm going to go and uh, I'll go in the centre and uh, do a little walk around there. Um, but for now, like I said, I didn't bring any cash with me, so I can't go in. Um, but uh, that'll make another video at some point. But anyway, we'll get back to the van. We'll grab the map and uh, we'll have a look. So if we can drive out somewhere a little bit more interesting, and or not necessarily more interesting, but somewhere that's else that's interesting, and uh, we'll see what's what. So, I'll see you in a moment. Right then, we are in the old Serum car park. Uh, I'm just going to head out. I've just set the sat nav to go to uh, a little tiny town right next to Stonehenge. So, let's go take a look and see what's what. There you go, look, the new camera's working. Well, this looks very pastoral. The ground is very rough here. Wiltshire is generally known for its big, wide agricultural fields. But this is almost sort of Hobbit territory again, where you've got this unused, uh, uncultivated land. Right, 
right, we're just 10 minutes away now from, uh, it wouldn't, the, the sat-nav wouldn't recognize Stonehenge. So I found the nearest small village to it and uh, it found that okay. And we're literally about 10 minutes away now. Uh, Stonehenge, turn right, okay. Stonehenge open. Oh, okay, they've got a new, oh, I see. This is, they've shut the road off. What's that all about then? Uh, I need to get my bearings. Hang on, let me pull in here. There used to be a road that ran past Stonehenge, um, of which there was a little byway that you could turn in and you could see it. There's masses of people walking down that road there. They've shut the road off. And it's English heritage, so they're going to charge the earth to go and have a look at it. Okay. I've lost my bearings. I'm not sure where I am. Oh, right. Well, last time last time I was at Stonehenge, there was the the car park with a building, and then you you um, you literally go under under the road under a tunnel, and there was Stonehenge. And they've changed it all. I can't even physically see Stonehenge because I was just going to get the zoom camera out and uh, zoom in on it. I can't even physically see it. Uh, okay, that's annoying. But obviously, everybody's walking up there, so it's got to be up there. Unless it's on the other side. Nope. Oh, well, that's a shame. Let's go around here and have a look. I've completely lost my bearings. If I go up this road, I might be able to see it down that way. If it's on that side of the road. Nope, it's completely out of sight. Nowhere to be seen. Oh, how annoying. Yeah, before, all, all you could do, you literally, you could park up and it would literally be a stone show over the fence and you could stop, have a quick look at it and move on. Um, but now it looks like you've got to go into this whole tourist trap thing and pay up, park up, go on this big long hike. Uh, yeah, not for me. I mean, I've seen Stonehenge before and I, to be honest, the first time I saw Stonehenge, the words out of my mouth was, is that it? <laughs> so it sort of pictured these huge, great monoliths and they're, they're actually quite small and it's quite a small little circle. Right, I just need to figure a way to get home now. Uh, let's, let me pull in here a minute. Let's have a look at the map and see where we're at. Uh, some more nice houses, nice thatched cottage here. Another one just around the corner here, look. I'm not sure, I mean I love thatched cottages, I think they're very very beautiful things, but I'm just not sure I'd want to own one, because I think you have to change the entire roof after so many years. And the creepy crawlies I would imagine you get in your house would be phenomenal. Um, so I'm not entirely sure uh, I'd want to actually own one. It's like horses, I think they are the most beautiful creatures on the planet. And I love, love, love horses, everything to do with horses. But I'm not sure I'd want to own one. I'm not sure I'd want to actually um, sort of take that route. 
um, because it it's well the impression I get is a bit of a full-time job unless you sort of employ someone to do it for you um, and that's just not I don't think that's necessarily a, a route I'd want to take or would be able to take So I think that's um, I think that's a, a way to appreciate stuff more is to, to you know to appreciate the aesthetics of something without necessarily sort of getting involved with the rigmarole of owning owning it. I mean, my mum when she was alive, she always had the the idea that um, if she was ever rich she wouldn't own anything she'd just kind of rent it all you know if she wanted to go into town or something she'd just hire a driver uh, and a car to take her there you know get a taxi or a limo or something but um, she wouldn't actually own the car herself and I think there could be something said for that because one of the things I've always sort of believed and talked about is um, you don't necessarily own things the things tend to own you and the more you own the more you sort of worry about them and you know the more they encroach onto your life and uh, just a, yeah just an interesting sort of thought popped into my head then anyway I know where we are now so I can clear the route and uh, we are on the avenue leading up to Stonehenge sorry <laughs> Avery Ugh. so I'm getting tired um, in fact if you saw my 2012 video that I made at Avery the end of the world video um, the December whatever it was 2012 um, it began right here I actually parked uh, yeah, I parked here and I walked up with a bunch of uh, hippie types that were banging their tambourines and uh, doing the autumn equinox thing. There's loads of cows grazing on them now. But yeah, this is the avenue of stones leading up to uh, what we will see shortly, which will be Avebury, not Stonehenge. Actually, I'm really annoyed about Stonehenge because they, they've changed it all around and you can't just do a quick a quick drive by and uh, you know take a quick snap and be on your way you have to sort of go there and uh, go through the visitor center and pay your money and everything now which is a bit a bit pants really so here we are Avery stone circle that mound there sort of circles the the whole stone circle I'm not going to get out and look at it today you've seen it loads of times in my previous video and it's getting on a bit late I'm getting a bit tired now as well so gonna head on home but here we go this is the bit where they do all the uh, the ceremonies and stuff I reckon that's the most um, powerful bit there's the Red Lion pub with the haunted well always busy that pub and the bikers like it as well So there we go. That's another trip out. Um, it's been quite quite a fun little trip. Quite enjoyed that. I'm quite tired now. All this driving. Uh, don't know why. Probably haven't, haven't had a lot to eat today. I think I had a couple of um, eggs this morning. That's some scrambled egg. But um, I think I'm flagging a bit now. I need to uh, have a bite to eat. So I'm sort of about I don't know 15 minutes from home now. So I think this is a good place to end this video so on that note uh, I have no idea once again how long this video is going to be but uh, if you've got this far thanks for hanging in there uh, so thanks for watching guys have a great rest of the day and I'll see you in the next video till then take care